President Kennedy begins a tour of four space installations at Huntsville, Alabama, where he is greeted by Dr. Werner von Braun, space pioneer and director of this research and development center. The missiles on display are dwarfed by the mighty Saturn rocket. This booster is the first stage of the rocket that will put the three-man Apollo capsule into a two-week orbit of the Earth in 1964 as a preliminary to a lunar shoot. The men who make it get very personal greetings. From Alabama to Cape Canaveral, next stop on the tour. At this U.S. space capital, the president has a long chat with Walter M. Shira, center, our next man in space, who is scheduled for a six-orbit flight. The commander-in-chief learns from an expert. Next stop, Houston, where he is cheered by thousands of Texans on his way to a stadium for his key speech of the trip. At Rice University, there's a crowd of 40,000 present, and Mr. Kennedy calls for backing for the U.S. space effort. He says that we cannot afford to lag if we want to be in the forefront of nations. Then to the manned spacecraft center, where the $20 billion Apollo project is in high gear. Here, the president sees mock-ups like the moon bug that is being prepared for a lunar landing, and the Gemini, a larger Mercury capsule for two men and other space vehicles. The president receives a briefing on highly classified matter and seems pleased with the progress report when he inspects the apparatus that the U.S. is making ready for further conquests of space. It was in Houston that Mr. Kennedy emphasized the need for peaceful uses of space. Fourth and final stop is at St. Louis for an inspection of the McDonnell plant where the Phantom II fighter bomber is built as well as Mercury and Gemini capsules. The F-4H is a 1,600-mile-an-hour streak of lightning. The Gemini, which was developed here, will allow two men to orbit the Earth for two weeks and will be used for experiments in outer space rendezvous and docking missions. This winds up the President's first-hand look at our space program and our progress in the race for space. Leather is falling into step in the fall fashion parade. Finished in an explosion of rainbow colors, leather has been styled into smocks and sheathed top skirts like this eye-stopping pair. Just the thing for a day's outing at Sterling Forest Gardens in New York. On the left, a pile line coat, and on the right, a natural pigskin. Leather to get a man in a lather. Designers have let their imaginations run riot. They've even captured a leopard to line this hooded suede. Another offbeat treatment of suede, a shift with a cardigan jacket, and the suede hat offers Milady a chance to add another feather to her cap. To enhance the classic tweed, this three-piece suit is trimmed with suede and hidden beneath the sweeping lines of the coat is a leather blouse. And here, the shift is treated with a saucy bolero jacket, all topped with a kidskin turban. Chesterfield in suede with a matching tote bang. These are the fashions aimed at women who want something different. And maybe one woman who doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> 